Uh, President Muhammadu Buhari will be traveling to the United States to participate in the United Nations General Assembly's 76th session later this week. Uh, that's uh, this week, rather. The 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly will officially open today with the general debate and will end on the 27th of September. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination, NINAS, has scheduled a one million man protest in front of the United Nations headquarters in New York, United States, to demand for a referendum on self-determination and abolition of uh, the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria during this uh, period. Well, Public Affairs Analyst Olade Ndiario joins me now to talk on this. Good morning. Thank you for joining us Good on morning. today's breakfast. Now, yearly, uh, we, Nigeria goes for this uh, meetings, the UN General Assembly. And uh, the question on, some Ni on the minds of some Nigerians is how committed have we been to the resolutions reached at this assembly? Thank you very much. Uh, for me, you call it an annual meeting. I call it annual jamboree. It's not enough to just move from here and attend the meetings. The question is, what benefits, specifically measurable now, have we as a nation and as a people derived from our membership of the United Nations? It's unfortunate. It's not enough to just sign protocols and append signatures. The question is, how far have we gone in living or abiding by the spirit and the letters of these resolutions? Is it the era of human rights? Is it the era of uh, even development, in, in, I mean, in equality and just and all of that? We've been scoring very low points. And for me, it's not enough to just say the president is attending the meeting. It's not enough. Hmm. A lot more. We need to look inwards, assess ourselves, and see where we are before we can consider ourselves worthy enough to attend these meetings, so even if we should at all. So from the look of things, um, when you are measuring how far we have come with the SDG goals, the MDGs and all of it, we haven't come any closer and so we, we shouldn't go about we, the coming to the meetings. We vision... 2020, 20, all those vision, vision, vision. This is 2021, winding down. Mm. Which of the visions have we accomplished to any reasonable percentage? Right. The answer is none. Okay? And we've become so an insecure environment that to even attempt to achieve any vision has been blocked. Why? Because movement from point A to point B to start with is not guaranteed mm. that you are leaving a place for another you're not sure of getting there in in, in peace and um in, in one piece right. to that extent how do we now say we are achieving any vision i i wasn't a small boy when this thing started coming up and i thought about 2020 nigeria will be an el dorado but are we no instead we are back to be i mean um life before the independence hmm. oh yes because what we're facing today is a is a worse kind of colonization we are being colonized by the hour by bandits by terrorists kidnappers and other criminals so how do we now look at ourselves and think we have um, reasons or a stand to go and converse or campaign at the Nations platform hmm. no it's unfortunate but, but you would recall uh, Tafawa Balewa's um, statement. At this is three. At the General Assembly. Yeah. And, you know, there was so much hope that speech brought. Yeah. But now, years yeah. after, it, it seems like uh, we have moved from your statement steps back. There's no need to be there. And I'm wondering from your perspective, how did we get here from mm. your perspective? Because it is not just about this current government. It was a journey no. that brought us to this point. It's not about this government. I remember that speech. The TV was black and white then. <laughs> and um, it, it surprised me with his level of elocution and capacity of intelligence. He spoke very nicely. He wasn't only talking about Nigeria, but about Nigeria providing Africa 
with leadership. Mm. But it's always been people being very long on talks and short on achievements. From government to government, where we will say we've achieved some measures of development and growth, but when looked at the, 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 the resources that we have um, expended, it does not tally. If it's a business organization, Nigeria is in the red. We've not made profit. It's been losses all the way. And I think at a point, we should look at ourselves in the face and tell ourselves some hard truths that things are not working. And then we begin to look for solutions, attacking the problems right from the roots. Isn't that what we try to do with uh, the conference, 2014 Comfab? We've been talking. In fact, the present arrangement, we've been talking since 1999. In 36 House of Assembly, National Assembly, we've been talking. The question is, are we walking the talk? If we are walking the talk... Who is supposed to walk the talk? Who is supposed to begin the, the walk? Who is supposed to give the, the directions of the that walk? that we elected right. and the people that they appointed hmm. are supposed to... They have the instrument of, I mean, the, the, the instrument of power. Right. They're supposed to utilize power to our advantage to make sure that the promises, the manifestos, okay, were brought to life. But how far have they taken us? How far have we as a as people... As followers. As followers held them to account that you made this agreement and you have not delivered on them? Well, on that score, I still take my position and I empathize with the followers. Why? Over the years, they've been regressively uh, impoverished. They've been frustrated. They've been castrated and disabled in a way that they no longer have the integrity and the, uh, the authority now to challenge the people they put in power. What we now have is what we call collective amnesia, whereby you see people defending their oppressors, and it's unfortunate. But I keep saying that the political class will realize that without us, they will not be. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's high time they started introspecting, looking inwards and looking back, and begin to effect corrections, whereby it will be a, a new day for Nigeria as a nation. When they lead our right, we will follow our right. Mm. It's like you and I, you ask the question and I provide answers. Yeah. If you ask me wrong questions, I will give you wrong answers. Right. We're talking about, I mean, if you bring in question about Forex now, and I, I talk, you know, it's not the relevant thing, right? Mm. So that is the way it, it goes. Leadership should demonstrate uh, to the followership where to go, how to go. Okay? And I promise you, they will follow. There was a time in this country, don't you work against um, indiscipline, mm. people were killed at bus stops. Yeah. There was nobody chasing them. Mm. The streets of Lagos, we didn't have road, uh, road cleaners that we have now, but Lagos was clean. Why? People stopped dropping things on the road. People stopped defecating de 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 by the roadside. They stopped urinating by the roadside. But what, what, what do we have? With solidarity demonstrating um, uh, incongruent behavior with what they preach to us. And then people also started misbehaving. And then we are where we are. For me, the UN also has to up its game. Right. We have UN. And I, I, I hate to say this. Afghanistan is a bad case. Mm. What is UN doing about it? It has remained... Perhaps th th those are part of the discussions. We have exactly. Myanmar as well. So those are part of the discussions, perhaps. Because a, a lot of persons believe that this session might just be offering the UN the opportunity to assert itself with member countries i have been monitoring global events since i was in primary school so i can tell you that it's always been hope hanging on hope that is gradually becoming hopelessness un has this earth and life image that people pay so much to keep going but when they have issues they they rarely come through and come through for them and that's my problem when you have a resolution and people um, paint their signatures, right? UN should have a mechanism to ensure compliance. It's like a marriage um, thing where you sign and a say certificate. you are taking this person um, uh, in sickness and in health. Yeah, you should know what you are doing. Hmm. So if you fail, either the church or the registry or government now or the court will whip you to line. Hmm. UN must have that mechanism until we begin to think around that. Will be wasting time today. We have a military government in Guinea. Mm. Nothing has come up from UN about it. 
and Mali. Uh, and Mali too. So when you look at those particular, and look at the way Afghanistan has become a killing field. Every day, mindlessly, people get killed for next to nothing. Yet, it's been mom from UN. Hmm. So who has UN truly, genuinely, and sincerely helped and rescued? Okay, UN has uh, failed several countries, and Nigeria is not an exception. Right. Now, Nigeria has its own responsibilities. That, Absolutely. That, that has to be said. But then again, we have our president who is going to be at this meeting. What are you looking forward to hearing him, you know, hop on that perhaps might send signals that perhaps we are, you know, changing the narrative and changing the cause of things uh, as time goes on. The have saying, a child that shows um, readiness to be lifted, okay, gets carried by the mother. The question you want to ask yourself, where have we demonstrated readiness, okay, to deliver value to Nigerians? Is it in the area of insecurity or the economy? Where today Naira stands at 550 to the dollar officially. We, we have not demonstrated pol enough political will or enough capacity to reflect ability to manage man and resources. So when you go to UN, what will you be asking for? They will ask you on what platform? A country that has been defined as the poverty capital of the world, mm. yet we will have private events and some people will be flying jets. It's an anathema. They don't go together. Okay, there's so much poverty and squalor all around and about us. Are we frontally addressing those things? Because when you now go and you say you need help, they will ask you, in what way have you, the little that you have, your resources, how well <coughs> have you utilized them? Like I said, if Nigeria is a company, by now the, country, the company should be thinking of winding down or a takeover because it's insolvent. And that's why we keep borrowing and borrowing. So now, if, if you are not confident on anything, perhaps we might want to tell the president what you expect to hear from him, setting an agenda for... Yes, these are issues. We are not just going to the meeting for nothing. There are reasons why you are going there. And perhaps those, the stakeholders might be watching and may borrow a leaf or two from what you have said. You know, growing up, we used to look forward to UN sessions where our leaders will go and make profound, heart-touching statements. Those days in university, we'll be analyzing. Those days. We keep referring we, we to those be, days. Those good old days now, on purpose, we will be analyzing. We had hope. And over the years, you know, like I told you, the hope keeps uh, regressing and becoming hopelessness. So what, it's not about talking now. If we set agenda and then the agenda is echoed at the UN by the president, the question is, who will bail the cards? Mm. I'm not blaming this government only, but I'm blaming virtually every government since independence. They've been very long on talks and very short in deliverance but and with, achievement. With, frankly speaking, we cannot continue like no, this. If, because you just asked who will bail the cards. Someone has to bail the cards. We cannot continue this way. Um, I'm saying it to you, I've said it to you before. That Nigeria needs to be reinvented. Hmm. Unfortunately, nobody has asked me to how? explain how and the way to go. I'm asking the now. way we are ready. You no, know, it's a script I took my time to, to put together, right? If you want to tell you, you will pay, I will invoice you. Or maybe invoice TVC. Genuinely speaking, it's not a, it's not enough to say we are amending our constitution, hmm. to say we are having a constitutional conference or we're talking, it's not enough. It goes beyond that because the rot that we are seeing today has gotten so deep to the very foundation of the country, to the roots, which, if not, I mean, it's become a cancer, okay? And then when I look at Nigeria, I, I'm scared, I'm afraid for the future generations. We, growing up, we didn't have to bother about going to pay debts. But now, my grandchildren, we're already borrowing you know, for them to pay in future. Mm. And that is not progress. It's All not right. able to go. What I, my little economics taught me that if you must borrow money, whatever project you are borrowing for, should be able to pay back itself, 
pay every cost, including associated cost, mm. okay, and then bring about a resultant development, generate either employment or infrastructure that people can see and enjoy. But in our case, it's not been so. I don't even know why we are borrowing anyway, if, I, if you ask me. And infrastructure and development. Wait, where are the infrastructure? We can't see them. We cannot. Let's not deceive ourselves. Lagos Development Expressway is still a case in point. 20 years after, and six, sorry, the seventh year now into this government is still not com com completed. And I can tell you, it won't be completed this year. Forget it. So, look at that. When you move around, the things you see do not give you the assurances that you expected. Right. Now, we are as, we are, things are as bad as it is. Instead of the political class looking forward to making them better, they are already struggling for power in 2023. 20. Without asking themselves, will there be 2023? And where are we of going course, to be? It's stemming from the belief that there will be 2023. That is yeah, why they are already, it, you are seeing the all plans. the things see, going on. In the with class, to that. they are incurable optimists. Okay? Forgetting that increasingly the people are becoming um, dis disinterested and no longer interested in the political game anymore. We are, they are complaining here and there. NARD has been on strike for a while now. Uh, ASUU, they are threatening to go on strike. Um, so many groups are either on strike or planning to go on strike. These are indications that things are not right. Hmm. SARS happened last year. SARS happened last year. Yeah, it's almost a year now. It's almost a it's, uh, wait, 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 October, right? Yeah. But the point is, ask yourself, all the issues tabled by the youths then, before the crisis now overran the, the, the protest, the general protest. Mm. How many of them have been genuinely addressed? Mm. How many, all those uh, um, tribunals or whatever that were set up from state to state, yeah. how well have they performed? On a scale of 100, what marks have they scored? It's always been story upon story. All right. Now, there, there's, there, uh, there's a group uh, called uh, Nigeria Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination uh, that is saying that they are ready to do a protest, carry out a protest at uh, the UN, uh, a one million man protest opposite the UN headquarters to drive home their point for a referendum on self-determination. They are pushing for that and they are ready to go there to lay their complaints. And I'm wondering what you make of this move by these people. You are talking of Nigerians, professionals and non-professionals, who mostly out of their own, I mean, without um, the, the, the desire to run away, run away from Nigeria mm. in search of the green uh, okay. fleet, right? And getting there, some have achieved some measure of success, right. while others are still struggling and battling with the failure that chased them out of here. So if they say they want to protest, nobody will stop them. In any case, the UN ground has always been an open field for protest. I have witnessed several there. Oh, okay. So, yeah. We will that cannot, achieve anything? We, they will protest, they will talk, they will litter the grounds with their placards and go away, and nothing will happen. Right. This time around, they have that zeal now, and they are determined to see that they get the audience that they require. Right. But after the audience, what after means? the protest, what goes? And that's the question. Again, right. are we going to say they, are, they don't have uh, uh, reasons or basis? No, they have basis and reasons. They, this morning, that are the, genuine. Yes, but, but I mean for protesting. Okay. Very genuine. One. This morning, the news was saying that um, the bandits being routed. From Sanfara and those places are heading southwards. So, right. so now the question is: Should we now begin to deploy our resources to begin to confront them more? What mm. and then abandon growth, development, and all other things that we require here? So when you look at those things, yeah. you want to opt out. If the marriage is not working, you don't manage it. You straighten it out. If it is not, then you go for a separation. All right. So we we'll leave the conversation here now. Aladdin Diario, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Show.